Yo, I remember back in the day when I uh I heard the truth for the first time. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my ears. So I wanted to study and disprove it. And I saw that the most high was serious. It was like it's like the scales fell off my eyes. Like, yo, he's talking about me. This whole time he was talking about me, I didn't know. Stop to give you more praise, honor, and glory that's due unto his name. Praise Yah. Yahweh Ba Shema Bashiach Yahweh Shah. We let Yahweh reign. Yo, this wicked world, wicked world. The love is lost. Love is lost. We preach Yahweh. They shrunk us off. These haters, yo, got they past this walk When it was you, he's talking to who broke the master's laws What was the cause? Why was I worth it? I pray y'all give me strength to fight Cause I ain't nothing perfect I got enough pent up inside to rise above the surface I got a savior by my side, but y'all don't deserve it And no joke, I mean Everybody thought I was crazy when I was telling the truth When I started quoting scriptures and telling them, yo, this is talking about us They didn't know how to take it I didn't know what to do about it, you know what I'm saying? Sort of like how Paul said, if I become your enemy by telling you the truth, so be it. For Yah so love is chosen, he gave his son to save him. So I'ma praise him, raise him fast to pray till something changes. I will it in, I'm flipping past a couple pages. He says we win, I'm holding fast this revelation Is they gon' hate me then if I don't walk the path of Satan? Is that gon' make me bend if all my friends are slapping hating? What if I drop my sin, repent to God and turn to Christ? How do I check the shame? Need to the master's call Won't take me out the game, even if I drop the ball Online on blocks and malls I gotta speak to reach you the living water, bread of life, and some meat to feed you. Here's what I'm trying to say. You can heed the call. Repent and keep the laws if you don't die today. But if you die in sin, can't be set to try again. It was like... It's like the scales fell off my eyes. Like, oh, he's talking about me. This whole time he was talking about me, I didn't know. So I to give you more praise, honor, and glory than do unto his name. Praise Yah, Yahweh Ba Shema Ba Shiach, Yahweh Shah, we let Yahweh reign. All right, all right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I don't know if I can be heard or not. So uh, if you don't mind, somebody let me know in the comment sections. Put a one up in there if you can hear me. Um, this thing isn't reading, letting me know anything. But we're going to go ahead and get into it. All right. Yeah, I see the words popping up. All right, cool. Let me set a couple of things in order and then we can go ahead and go. All right. Shabbat Shalom, Yashatari de la Paz. All right, cool, cool. You can hear me. Good, good. All righty. A couple of things real quick. All righty. All right, so, and then let me get the banners going. We're doing, we're coming from Ecclesiasticus chapter 29. We're going to read Ecclesiasticus chapter 29 for devotion. 
good brother KJV is in the building. Ecclesiasticus 29 for devotion, brother KJV. I know they already. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Sounding good. Your mic is good. We are we are set to go, fam. Uh, real quick before you start, um, I switched out a piece on the uh, on a, on my Ethernet feed. So uh, when it when it cuts me off, if it does, because it's a different piece, um, just say you know, hey, it 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 glitched, so I can know how many times it does it during the stream, so I can know that I need to switch this piece out. Got you. All right, thank you. That I can do. And um, somebody in the house, grab me a charger for this real quick. Grab me a charger for this and we're good. Uh, iPhone charger, please. Mine, I left mine in the truck. All right, can you plug that up on the computer? Yeah, just find a USB spot for that. And then, and my apologies, everybody. I should already had this together. All right, so let's get it. Let's get into the reading. Ecclesiasticus chapter 29. Um, matter of fact, go ahead and bookmark this scripture because we're coming back to it a few times. And uh, it is what it is. All right, so I'm set there. All right, so let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Ecclesiasticus chapter 29 for devotion. Also, I have another... Um, Right, right, right. All right. One second. All right. So let's go. Starting at verse one, it says, He that is merciful will lend unto his neighbor, and he that strengtheneth his hand keepeth the commandments. Lend to thy neighbor in time of his need, and pay thou thy neighbor again in due season. Keep thy word and deal faithfully with him. Thou shalt always find the thing that is necessary for thee. Many, when a thing was lent them, reckon it to be found and put them to trouble that helped them. Till he has received, he will kiss a man's hand. All right, I, I, let me stop. Until he has received, he will kiss a man's hand. And for his neighbor's money, he will speak submissively. But when he should repay, we uh, he will prolong the time and return words of grief and complain of the time. If he prevail, he shall hardly receive the half, and he will count as if he had found it. If not, he has deprived him of his money, and he has gotten him an enemy without cause. He payeth him with cursing and railings, and for honor he pay, or he will pay him disgrace. Many, therefore, have refused to lend for other men's ill dealings, fearing to be defrauded. Yet have thou patience with a man in poor estate, and delay not to show him mercy. Help the poor for the commandment's sake, and turn him not away because of his poverty. Lose thy money for thy brother and thy friend, and let it not rust under a stone to be lost. Lay up thy treasures according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. Shut up alms in thine storehouse, and it shall deliver thee from all affliction. It shall fight for thee against thine enemies better than a mighty shield and a strong spear. An honest man is surety for his neighbor, but he that is impudent will forsake him. Forget not the friendship of thy surety, for he hath given his life for thee. A sinner will overthrow a good estate for his surety. He that is of an unknown or unthankful mind will leave him in danger that delivered him. Surety has undone many a good estate and shaken them as a wave of the sea. Mighty men have it driven from their houses so that they wandered among strange nations. A wicked man transgressing the commandments of Yahweh shall fall into surety ship. And he that, uh, that undertaketh and followeth other men's business for gain shall fall into suits. For thy neighbor according to thy power, and excuse me, help thy neighbor according to thy power and beware that thou thyself fall not into the same. Verse 21, the chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and 
a house to cover thy shame. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage than delicate fare in another man's house, be it a little or much. Hold thee contended that thou hear not the reproach of thy house. Uh, verse 24, for it is a miserable life to go from house to house. For where thou art a stranger, thou darest not open thy mouth. There thou shalt entertain and feast and have no thanks. Moreover, thou shalt hear bitter words. Come thou stranger and furnish a table and feed me of thou what thou hast ready. Give place, thou stranger, to an honorable man. My brother cometh to be lodged, and I have need of mine house. These things are grievous to a man's understanding and upbraiding of house room and reproaching of the lender. All right, that's the most high's word. It's already blessed. So let's go ahead and get into it. Ecclesiasticus chapter 29. We might refer to it from time to time. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Nicole. Uh, over in YouTube land, good to see you. Um, Brother Jason Jackson, good to see you as well. Before we get started, let me go ahead and take care of a couple of things. Brother KJV, you got any comments on what we just read I, before we get into it? Yeah, actually, um, you know, it's an interesting scripture because I had to, you know, I had to pull this out before on a on a person just to say, hey, look, um, this is how we should be dealing. And um, there's mm -hmm. one that says the wicked. Oh, there's also another one that says the wicked borroweth and repay if not. Um, also touching towards the end, uh, let me go back to it real quick. <clears throat> Going back towards the end here, um, it says, uh, when it's talking about a person living from house to house, um, mm -hmm. this, I, I, I've seen this before, where like, you know, uh, way back in the day, you had that one, that one uncle or that one person, and then the family like, oh, you could stay with me. And then in later on, it, you know, when it says they shall entertain and feast and have uh, no thanks in verse 25, moreover, thou shalt hear bitter words. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, you start hearing, you know, you'll hear people whispering behind your back or not behind your back, but they'll be in the kitchen and they'll whisper just enough so you can hear them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they'll act like they didn't mean for you to hear them and stuff like that. Okay. So, you know, this is, you know. It, it, it's funny because when we go back to the apocrypha <laughs> and, and see the wisdom, oh, you got a feedback going on, brother. No, that was my bad. I was trying to get together with my phone, but go ahead. I hear you. All right. So it's funny because when we go back to the apocrypha and see all the wisdom and everything that's uh, that's located in it, and then we look back on like our grandma and our great grandma and our great great grandma, how they uh, how how they would have these same uh wise sayings and things like that it just makes you think you know and, 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 it, and it reiterates and reinstills that this is our book and where they got a lot of that wisdom from mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so definitely i was reading that scripture thinking you know what i'm saying wow i've seen this i've seen this play out we gonna i don't want to get ahead of myself but we definitely gonna touch on it we definitely going to touch on it so but yeah go ahead and keep um keep proverbs 20 not proverbs but ecclesiasticus chapter 29 in your mental rolodex all right so getting into the slides let's go ahead and get uh genesis chapter 3 and 17 real quick okay let's get genesis chapter 3 and verse 17 right <clears throat> he says and to the man he said because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, saying, Do not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, and toil you are to eat of it all the days of your life. Why did we start with this scripture in Genesis? Because in the beginning, the Most High provided everything that man needed, right? And because of the curse, now, you know what I'm saying? Everything, he says, everything that you receive now will be by the sweat of your brow, okay? You're going to have to work for it. And then not only that, the uh, the land which he had gave them in the beginning became cursed. Now, let's look at Matthews chapter 16 and 26 real quick. All right. And I know I'm flying through these, but uh, 
you know what I'm saying? Just bear with me. He says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a, shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Right. This is important because a lot of people are dealing with um, the understanding that they got to chase the bag. They got to chase the bag. Nobody is um, happy in life unless they are, you know, what I'm saying rich or they're gainfully uh, this and that. Yes, we need money in order to have like the scriptures in Ecclesiastes 29 said we need that. Um, we need food. We need water, food, clothes. We need shelter. We need those things in order to um, in order to survive. But I love how Ecclesiastes chapter 29 puts it. It says to cover your shame. OK, let's nowadays. A lot of people, myself included, uh, I would be embarrassed to be seen walking. Even, you know what I'm saying? If I have to drop my because my repair shop is right down the street from the house. If I drop my car off, you know what I'm saying? It didn't used to be like this. But back in the day, we used to walk all the time as soon as the weather hit. Now I'm looking over my shoulder, seeing who see me walking home. You know what I'm saying? As if I'm destitute or something of that nature. You know what I'm saying? That's just something personal that I just need to work on myself. But it's just funny how time change. Right. Um, Lauren Hill says something in, in a song back in the day. She said, it's funny how money changes situation. Miscommunication leads to confrontation. You know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. I love how Ecclesiastic is wrote, how um, it's exactly that same way when you lend some money to somebody trying to be benevolent, so on and so forth. But then when it's time to pay it back, all of a sudden there's, you know, what I'm saying strife, so on and so forth. People put too much emphasis on money. OK, that's the whole point. Right. A lot of people assume that if they don't have the wealth. All right. Then they're not blessed. You'll see a lot of people, you know, what I'm saying when they get them a new car, you know, oh, look what the Lord has done. You see what I'm saying? So it's it's kind of like we, we have to fix people's vision when it comes to what a blessing is. All right. When it comes to the to the blessing and then like um, when you're when you're blessed with cars and homes and, you know, what I'm saying financial uh, superiority, let's just put it that way. And when you're. Um, hood rich or however you want to see it you assume that that's attributed to uh the father right a lot of people don't really understand and we're going to get into it um how the enemy blesses those for doing his will as well all right so be careful when you sitting up there talking about won't he do it won't he do it won't who do it you know who doing it okay that's important that's important sins are like a credit card okay enjoy now and pay later hmm let's deal with it let's deal with it we didn't come to play with them sister uh sister Satari, uh, yasatari de la paz we ain't come to play with them matter of fact uh sister yolanda hayes shabbat shalom sister shiata israel uh sister alice bronson brother romano bronson good to see you um of course, my sister Nicole in the building, my sister uh, Kahava Judah. Good to see you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. But let's get into it. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through seven. Right. Let's pull it up real quick. I thought I was going to have it on screen, but, you know, your boy be lacking sometimes. Your boy be lacking sometimes. But we bring this scripture out a lot. So this kind of should be in your mental Rolodex already. Right. But what does he say? He says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of Elohim having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. All right. 
Now, we have to understand that when it's talking about lovers of themselves and we're connecting that thing with uh, monetary gains, so on and so forth, we have to see the relationship, right? You can put that in a, male, in a female and male relationship, how the independent woman can't submit to her man or her husband. Why? Probably because she make more money than him. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those situations uh, bring themselves to the forefront where money uh, complicates the situation, right? When money is the first thing or when you put uh, when you put money, you know what I'm saying, ahead of the most high, a lot of things are important to you, okay? Of course, we, we, we've heard the saying that money can't buy everything, you know what I'm saying? But there's some people who attest that it can, right? So go ahead, brother. KB. Uh, yes, sir. So these scriptures right here specifically, um, you know, I've been talking about a lot lately about um, the relationships between men and women, uh, relationships mm -hmm. between, uh, you know, individual nations like uh, black men, black women, things like that. Mm -hmm. And these scriptures not only I mean, these are very specific. And as people go through them, they usually as they read them, they just read them like, you know, passively. Right. But these scriptures are specifically dealing with characteristics also of what you have in uh, modern women or narcissism. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay. we, I'm going to go just hit a, just like two of them, like two or three of them. So it says um, we'll start with it says for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Right. right. Ulcers, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful and holy. But when we get into verse three, it says without natural affection. Now, the natural order of things is the, you know, women, you know, love their husbands, so on and so forth. Right. Uh, truce breakers, false accusers. OK, w what do you see in a lot of marriages when one person is doing something? They go and accuse the other person of these things. So mm -hmm. these scriptures, sometimes they have even a broader aspect that can be applied to our lives and in, in different um, avenues, whether it be work uh relationship um personal relationship friendships marriages all those things so it's important that people get these things when we go down to number four traitors all right these are the things oh you betrayed me uh heady high-minded lovers of pleasure so you got people out there who there are some women who can't who can't be pleased in the sense of oh well this person has a big house and and this that and the other Mm -hmm. So you'll see that's why you got all the videos out there on YouTube now where you'll have a person saying, oh, well, I want to leave my husband because this this person has a new car or, you know, all these types of crazy things. Just mm -hmm. understand people that um, the scripture spoke of these things first. That's all I got. Okay. And you're, you're on point with that, too. And then I was just watching a video also where they did this interview with this lady who said she left her husband because he could not provide the lifestyle that she uh, was accustomed to. All right. So she left her husband and then he ended up passing away, so on and so forth. And then she regretted it because out of all of the men that had the money that she was chasing, none of her loved her. You know what I'm saying? None of, none of those men loved her the way that that man, you know what I'm saying, that humble man ended up passing away on her. You know what I'm saying? And it taught her a lesson, but she learned it too late. All right. A lot of people don't understand that you cannot serve the most high and money. You know, a lot of people put the, such an emphasis on money that money is their God. Right. It's a it's very funny how on your dollar bill, it says in God, we trust. What God are you? What God are you trusting? You see what I'm saying? Brother Kayin. Good to see you. Ak Shabbat Shalom, family. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 and 25. What does it say? It says, no one is able to serve two masters, for either he shall hate the one and love the other, right? Either he shall hate the one and love the other. A lot of people um, don't like the law, statutes, and commandments and say that it has nothing to do with love, Uh but we just read in Ecclesiasticus that if you lend to your neighbor, you are fulfilling Torah, right? Ecclesiasticus chapter 29. But listen what he says. No one is able to serve two masters, right? You have these preachers that are uh, 
pastoring churches and they're greedy for gain, right? They'll sit up there, tell you a bunch of lies and shake a pot in your face, right? And then you go a whole month or two without tithing, guess what the next sermon going to be on? Hmm? You better, you, okay, you have, you have to understand, nobody can serve two masters. They're either going to love the, hate the one and love the other, or else they shall cleave to the one and despise the other. You are not able to serve Elohim and man, okay? Or, I mean, and mammon, right? Because of this, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you shall eat or drink, or about your body, what you shall put it put on it is not life more than food and food more than the body hmm now understand the the uh order how the most high set these things in order in psalms he says if you delight yourself in me what i shall give you the desires of your heart All right and he also has the scripture where he says uh which one of you if your child asks for bread you give him a stone you know what i'm saying or a serpent right and then he he goes into how the father provides but at the end of the day who is your father hmm we're going to get into the whole music industry and that whole business on how they had to sell their souls in order to reap the benefits this that and the third we're going to get into that but go ahead brother kjv oh uh, yes sir so a lot of times and and these are all good scriptures um, you know, we are to, you know, help out our neighbor, lend to our neighbor when they're in need. It's very important. We we determine who is classified as our neighbor. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I've seen back in the day, you know, we all come, come from, you know, you know, the Christianity, Baptist, Baptist or whatever, you know, Lutherans, whatever people come mm -hmm. from different things. Um, and they will take advantage of this. Like, well, you got this money, so don't you ain't you supposed to loan to me? Well, first off, in Ecclesiastes, I think chapter 12, you know what I'm saying? Somewhere around there it says, lend to the godly man, not the sinner. Mm -hmm. But once you do lend to that person, right? We have over here in Psalms uh chapter 37, uh, verse 21, because mm -hmm. because they'll try to take advantage of you. This is this is what happens. But in the Bible, it says in Psalms chapter 37, verse 21, the wicked borroweth. And pay if not again, mm -hmm. but the righteous show of mercy and give it right. So, right. if this person, if you loan and this person doesn't pay you back, hey, it lets you know where they stand. And if that person is not willing to pay you back, is that person really your neighbor or is that a wicked person? The Bible says they're a wicked person. Mm hmm. Kind, kind. Good, good that you brought that out. I, and then we'll actually, matter of fact, um, Put a put a real, real, real quick. So if anybody got somebody out there that owing money and they trying to browbeat you over the head with the Bible, you take them to Psalms chapter thirty seven verse twenty one. Mm -hmm. And you, <laughs> so you know. And then and then also when when we're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter twenty nine, he talks about your neighbor. And like the good brother said, it's important to know who your neighbor is. This is this isn't talking about you know what I'm saying any and everybody, right? But at the end of the day, um, uh, what was that? Not at the end of the day, but just as a small example, when they tell you that you should donate to this cause and that cause, and then they give you the avenue, text this number, so on and so forth, if you want to donate $10 to blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? You, you have no clue where that money is going, all right? If it's going to that good cause, so on and so forth. But there is evidence of what actually happens to the money. Right. There's actually there's evidence of what happens to the blood when you donate it to the Red Cross. You see what I'm saying? When you donate the money, they got stockpiles of this money that hasn't gone anywhere. They donated to Haiti. There's a video where they donated to Haiti. Right. And then instead of supplying the relief that these people needed because they lost their homes in the earthquakes and so on and so forth, they had to um, build tent colonies for themselves but you know what the the nations that or, or the organization that was collecting all of the money you know what they did with it they built them a soccer stadium right next to the tents that they was living in instead of you know and rebuilding the homes that they lost it, it, you got you, you have to understand that the most high 
<clears throat> he's going to repay he's going to repay that wickedness but i want to go back to matthew 6 real quick matthew 6 because when we stop at verse 25 verse 26 says something very important right because we're we're understanding brother kaim says and with that scripture the righteous should be right kind kind of all right looking at verse 26 right well let me start let me start back over at 25 it says therefore i say unto you take no thought for your life what shall you eat what shall you drink uh nor yet your body what shall you put on it's not life more than me and body more than raiment verse 26 he says behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them are ye not much better than they he says which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature all right and why take ye thought for raiment go ahead and then he goes into the the lilies of the field how they grow and toil not neither do they spin all right if you delight yourself in the most high he's going to take care of his own right but at the same time when we go into let's get matter of fact since i'm in the scripture flipping mode let's get the let's get psalms chapter 73 because david says something very important right here let's get psalms chapter 73 and i don't know why i didn't think of it before it would have been up on the slides all right but look at what the what, look at what he says after we consider Matthew chapter 6 and verses 20 24 through uh we can say 28 right look at what he says in Psalms chapter 73 he says truly Elohim is good to Israel even to such that are of a clean heart he says but as for me my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped now um David is saying, yo, I almost fell off. And he's going to tell you why he almost fell off. He says, for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Hmm. All right. We can go all the way into that. And, and then also Psalms chapter 37 uh, says the same thing. Matter of fact, let's go there real quick before we move on. Psalms chapter 37. right it says in that very first verse fret not thyself because of evil doers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity for they shall soon be caught cut like the grass and wither as the green herb right so on and so forth so the most high is telling you okay don't fall off because you see the wealth of the wicked this that and the third you don't know how they got they their wealth so on and so forth and at the same time if you have that mind state and we just read the scripture said you can't serve the most high and mammon correct now let's look at what first john chapter 2 and 15 says because i know i'm doing a lot about bible flipping but that deals with loving the world correct all right being a lover of the world and i'm i'm flip i got a whole bunch of slides to get through i'm sorry y'all but look at what he says he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him all right that's why we are not to be hung up on what the world calls you know what i'm saying blessed you know what i'm saying let's get uh first timothy verse uh chapter six looking at verses seven through twelve real quick right this is very important considering the fact that once you leave here everything that you have obtained is going to be left to somebody else first timothy chapter 6 and verse 7 it says for we brought nothing into this world we brought nothing into this world and it is impossible to take anything out when we have food and covering we shall be satisfied with these okay but those wishing to be rich fall into trial and a snare and into many foolish and in injurious uh lusts which plunge men in ruin and destruction for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some by longing for it have strayed from the faith and pierced themselves through with many pains but you O man of elohim flee from all this and pursue righteousness reverence belief love endurance meekness fight the good fight of faith lay hold on everlasting life to which ye were also called and have confessed the good confession before many witnesses right that that scripture right there preached didn't it 
that thing right there preach because when we're going along with the world guess what there's a way that seems right proverbs uh, um proverbs 14 and 12 says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death hmm be careful when you start sitting up there talking about won't he do it, won't he do it, okay? And then getting back to the fact of what we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 29. Brother KJV, did you have something right there before we moved on? Oh, no, I always got something, but no, I didn't have anything. Um, but real quick, just touching on, um, you know, touching on the scripture that we just uh, went over in Timothy. Mm -hmm. Um it, it, you know, it's very important people, you know, really take heart to these things because a lot of times, you know, people will, you know, they're out there, they're chasing things. Right. Mm -hmm. And I found like some of the better parts of my of my of my time over, say, the past, you know, say 10, 15 years, um, you know, I, when I, I quit my job that I was making a lot of money at and I didn't even really do anything. I just quit. You know what I'm saying? I quit my job and. You know, I had kind of I was kind of prepared for it, though. And mm -hmm. I, and so I kind of, you know, had been responsible. So I was able to able to do that. But I walked away from a job making a whole bunch of money back in the day, like, you know, decent money. And then I was like, you know, at peace It's like, OK, I'm not rushing into work. Yeah, I can't do all the things that I used to do, but mm -hmm. I was content and happy. Right. Um you had one over the one that says uh, with uh, food and raiment, be therefore content. I think, mm -hmm. you know, that's very important. When we go into the next one, the Proverbs, uh, you know, there's a way that seemeth right to a man. But in the in the end is death. It's very important that we always take heed to that wisdom. Why? Because that also applies to, to us, you know, or people who are teaching things like that. We have to always consistently weigh everything we do against against the righteousness of the scriptures right mm -hmm. and, you know examine ourselves against those those first five books of the bible the torah all right so come 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 i feel I, I feel you i feel you all right so dealing with what we will piggybacking off of what we did in ecclesiastes chapter 29 let's deal with the fact that you were blessed to be a blessing right for those who uh have obtained so on and so forth we just read that in in timothy like the brother brought out that um matter of fact before i go there before i go there just to piggyback off of a point that he made <clears throat> all right he says for we brought not into this world and it is impossible to take anything out all right and then the brother uh also quoted us when we said uh when the scripture said we have uh, when we have food and covering, we shall be satisfied with these. But those wishing to be rich fall into trial and a snare. All right. So let's get into that real quick. All right. You are blessed to be a blessing. Right now, he says in verses 16, uh, 17 through 19, real quick, he says, charge those who are rich in this present age not to be high minded. OK, when when he tells you to charge those who are rich in this present age not to be high minded, what is he saying? He says, nor to trust in the uncertainty of riches, but in living, but in the living Elohim who gives us richly for all enjoyment to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, ready to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come so that they lay hold on everlasting life all right so let's grab back to um ecclesiasticus chapter 29 for a second okay ecclesiasticus chapter 29 that's why i was like put a pin in that we're gonna visit that a few times right but look at what he says Oh, man, I, I got to find it. I got to find it. All right. Well, while, while you find that, I, I'll just go ahead. 
add in there real quick as we as we look at over here at the uh, Timothy scripture charge those who are rich in this present age mm -hmm. not to be high minded nor to trust in the uncertainty of riches but right. in the living Elohim so understand people that um we have a good example of this and uh, that you know there's an Edomite dude Job he has an entire book in the bible and mm -hmm. he was this mega rich person right Elon Musk and all these guys, they didn't have nothing on, on guys like Job and Solomon. It was it was insane. It was crazy. And even though he was rich, Job practiced high level philanthropy. He, he was just consistently giving, 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 giving. Right. So, there, you know, but he also practiced, you know, praying and, and, and for his children daily. Right. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't it wasn't his money that he trusted in. It was Elohim. That's an example. And I bring that out because, you know, um, it's important that we under we read and learn from the book of Job and, and understand what he went through. Understand that one person might be here one day. You might be on the top one day. You'd be on the bottom the next day. Uh, you know, we've all seen this happen through our lives. So. The, the same people you step on going up is the, the, the same, you know, for lack of a better term, the same asses you have to kiss when you're falling down. So it's important to be kind as you, you know, kind always respect everyone, whether, mm -hmm. you know, whether rich, poor, you know, I, I see people, even if they're homeless, I treat, hey, treat them just like they one of my friends or stuff like that. Why? Because we never know that, you know, it could be an angel that we're entertaining, a messenger, as it says over in the scriptures. God. Right. But it's not even about that. It's just about just being kind to everyone, because the most important thing you leave isn't is not about, um, hey, this is what I accomplish. This is what I'm leaving, because like the scripture says, you can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about how you treated people while you were here is what they will remember you for and how you made them feel. And understand people people say well tyrone we talk to you it don't feel good at all you you mean well yeah you think i'm mean because i'm going to tell you the truth of these scriptures because that's where i'm at now in life mm -hmm. once i'm no longer here or say once the the good brother the minister is no longer here you know you know another 70 years from now or, you know most high willing um once we're not here and you have come into the understanding you'll look back on that and you'll say wait a minute these brothers, they did care enough to throw away all their past relationships, throw away being the 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 life of the party, to throw away all those things, to to focus and, and and sacrifice and do this, you know, for the people. Why? That's a part of giving your life for your friends. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it says there's no greater sacrifice than that of giving your life for your friends. Christ ain't talking about go out there and you know bust yourself upside the head with a bottle and kill yourself. Nothing crazy. But it's also how you give your life daily for your mm -hmm. friends, how you sacrifice daily and, and, and what you what you choose to do with the time you have and, and the truth you choose to tell people, even though it, it can cost you a, cost you a lot. You see what I'm saying? I have to tell people the truth all the time and, and, it, and it costs. And then that there therein lies the test. Mm -hmm. Same test Job had to go through. When he had to deal with the three, the three cats that rolled up on him, his friends. Right. But he had to tell the truth no matter what it cost him. And his situation hey, he got worse and worse and worse. Right. Until the most high came in and said, hey, you trusted in, 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 in Yahweh, trusted in the Lord, as they call it, mm -hmm. and turned his whole thing around. So God. hopefully you found what you were looking for on that. No, no I did. I did. It was it was verse 20. It was verse 20 when he says, charge those who are rich in this present age not to be high minded. In verse 20, he says, help thy neighbor according to thy power and beware that thou thyself not fall into the same. Right. It's, it's a pity if you are somewhere where you can look down upon others. When the most high said that riches, you know, what I'm saying are an uncertainty. Right. Charge, you know, what I'm saying. He says, uh, nor trust in the uncertainty of riches, but in the living Elohim. All right. That's that's not a guarantee that you won't find yourself in that same position. You see what I'm saying? 
And then what if just so happens somebody treated you the way that, you know what I'm saying, that you treated them? When you had the power, you know what I'm saying, you shut up your bowels of affection for somebody that was in need. The Most High says, okay, I see all of that. Matter of fact, Christ says, as you have done to the least of these, you've done also unto me. You see what I'm saying? So you have to understand that there is a distinct difference between, you know what I'm saying, being rich, because a lot of us are rich in other ways, not just financial, right? A lot of us are rich in knowledge. Brothers like, you know what I'm saying, brother like KJV is rich with the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? A lot of our, our women, so on and so forth, are rich in compassion. We have a lot of gifts, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things that we are blessed with, but we are told to focus on money. You ain't blessed if you don't have money. But in that same sense, with all of those different blessings, you are still blessed to be a blessing. What if the good brother KJV, with all that blessing that the Most High has given him in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, what if he just sat on it and didn't say nothing? You see what I'm saying? I got mine. Now you go get yours. I want you to see the parallel relationship, how it is with people with money. I got mine. You go get yours. No, you were blessed to be a blessing. Right. And the reason the scripture says you can't serve Elohim and mammon, the most high in money, is because people don't really understand that that's a religion. Right. Loving money within itself is a religion. Right. They call it capitalism. Let's look at let's look at this next meme real quick. Capitalism is a religion. Let's break it down. Banks are churches. Bankers are the priests. Wealth is heaven. Poverty is hell. Rich people are saints. Poor people are sinners. Commodities are blessings and money is God. OK. Broken down perfectly, all right, by uh Miguel D. Lewis. He said that thing perfectly. All right. You have to understand how many, how many companies or brands do you think there are that make money off products that they know daggone well are harmful and deadly? Hmm. They're harmful and deadly to the public, all right, but they do it anyways because of the profit that they make. Hmm. Something to consider. Self-destructive capitalism. I know people that that love capitalism hate when I start talking about capitalism. But let me just say it in this term, in this form. Self-destructive capitalism. OK, money is so important to this to uh, people who have those uh, major corporations and companies that they'll do. They'll spend money on a campaign to, you know, what I'm saying get you to lower your carbon emission right when they could have used that same money in the clean energy for themselves right you have the uh the oil uh moguls so on and so forth uh, uh i forget the company's name so on and so forth but they actually spent six million dollars on commercials telling you to lower your carbon footprint exxon bp exactly mm -hmm. that's funny they make all of this money destroying the planet. Like we only got we only got this one planet, but they got that money. You see what I'm saying? So that that, that should tell you something right there. <clears throat> I should, but it doesn't for a lot of people. Capitalism is an economic system based on private ownership of the means of production and their operation of for profit. Characteristics central to capitalism include private property, capital accumulation, wage labor, voluntary exchange, a price system, a competitive market uh, and competitive markets. It says in a capitalist market economy, decision making and investments are determined by the owners of the factors of production and financial and capital markets. And prices are the distribution of goods and mainly determined by competition in the market. Right. Understand? Did I say? Did I say too much? Did y'all get all of that? I seen the look like. Wait a minute, brother. I couldn't understand all of that. But understand that that what that what that system is. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people chase that. Get the bag. Get the bag. I'm chasing the bag. You see my man holding the bag, right? 
A lot of people wake up every day. If you, you know what I'm saying? If you righteous and following the law, statutes, and the commandments, but this individual over here is uh chasing the bag, right? Then in his eyes, he has more influence than the so-called righteous, right? What they might call poor, the most high looks at, you know what I'm saying, as wealth, right? Also, but before you before you go in, brother KJV, uh, I got another scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. All right, Ecclesiastes not twelve, but chapter thirteen, because you have to understand these people who have the influence over you, over the individuals who are, who are trying to get you uh, to walk in righteousness, who's trying to teach you the law, statutes, and commandments, trying to tell you who you are as a nation, as the apple of the Most High's eye. These people, okay have your attention these rich individuals that's why they try to use athletes as role models right they use entertainers for black role models why hmm? let's read what ecclesiasticus chapter 13 and 23 says it says a rich man when a rich when a rich man speaketh every man hold his tongue hmm? when a rich man speaks every man hold his tongue and look and what at what he says he says they extol it to the clouds. Or oh, LeBron James said, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. He says, but if a poor man speak, they say, what fellow? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? What? What? Who is this character? What is he talking about? Let me start over. He says, when a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue. And look at what he says. They extol it to the clouds. But if the poor man speak, they say, what fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. Man, Ecclesiasticus is one of my favorite books. If you ain't got an apocrypha, whoo, you missing. You missing. But go ahead, Brother KJV. Yeah, man. That... <laughs> Um, I like how you explain that. I explain. I remember uh, years ago, man, you know, that one kind of hit me because I remember explaining this to my dad years and years and years ago. And mm -hmm. uh, I explained it to him just like that. I said, Dad, I said, for example, what happens in, in, in the black community if someone on television says something or somebody rich says something, uh, we people are taking it and holding it in a higher regard. And uh, so so to hear you explain that scripture like that, you know, all these years later, you know, it, it you know, that that does my heart well. Uh, what I was going to say before on, on the on the capitalism thing, a, a lot of the elements of capitalism are not bad. You know, just, you know, in, you know, like we see in the uh, scriptures, if a man doesn't work, a man doesn't eat. But the thing I wanted to bring out was you had mentioned the guy like, you know, the people chasing the bag. You hear that catchphrase all the time nowadays, the bag, chase, get the bag. Right. Mm -hmm. But people you have to also be mindful of people who you may may not perceive as chasing the bag, but they're actually chasing your bag. What do I mean by that? Well, when I quit my job all those years ago. My family, it, it was like it was like it was like they had, like they had lost a like they had lost a family member or something, or like like the family dog had died, mm -hmm. right? Because and and I, and I I went I went to Georgia and I let them I went to Georgia I, I said you know let let everybody knew that the, the 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 Bank of Tyrone you know first first Capital One Bank of Tyrone is officially closed, and you know what I'm the long story long story short what I'm trying to say is be mindful of people not only chasing the bag but chasing your bag right mm. or chasing your bag i gotta use proper proper english but um just be mindful of that man you know you you look around you know for a second and uh you know somebody got that you know might have a hand in your pocket things like that mm -hmm. same thing with the uh the uh church pastors and things like that that are are dealing wickedly and not actually helping the people Right. Not bringing that food into the storehouse and saving it up for, for when those are in need. You know what I'm saying? They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're not just chasing the bag. They're chasing your bag because you're bringing that money in there unknowingly and putting it with an unrighteous steward of that money. Right. So. Con. Con. Excellent. 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 Sister Shiyada. 
she says isn't capitalism one of the foundations of this nation actually yes it is a lot of people really don't that don't study history um don't understand how most of the wars that are fought are about money if you get a chance go on youtube and type up all wars are bankers wars okay let that good brother break it down you know what i'm saying we don't have that much time to spend on it but a lot of people really don't understand like if just for a small tidbit <clears throat> The brother, um, Ibram X. Kendi, he has a book called Stamp from the Beginning. And in that book, he talks about how in the North, um, you know, what I'm saying when they had the, uh, the split, the, the, the Union and the Confederate, that the um, Union was basically trying to enter into international trade. But they couldn't enter into international trade with nations who had freed slavery, you know what I'm saying, or nations of color when they themselves were still dealing in slavery. You see, so they had to make a break. They didn't want to, but they had to make, you know what I'm saying, a decision to try to abolish slavery. We don't hear that side of the story, you know what I'm saying, in our history books. So it's important that you actually read. The book is by Ibram X. Kendi, you know what I'm saying, and it's called Stamp from the Beginning. If you get that book and read it, you'll understand a lot, you know what I'm saying, about history. Okay. They say if you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book. They definitely put a lot of uh, brother Ibram X. Kennedy definitely put a lot of information in that book. You know what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of people don't refer to you, the United States as a nation, but they actually refer to it as a corporation. Um, but let's let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. All right. Uh, and let's get Micah chapter three, looking at verses nine through twelve. All right. He says, hear this, please, you heads of the house of Jacob. And you rulers of the house of Israel who despise right ruling and distort all that is straight. Those building up Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with unrighteousness. Her heads, her what? Her heads judge for a bribe. Her priests, her what? Her priests teach for pay. And her prophets, her what? Her prophets divine for a price. Yet they lean on Yah and say, is not Yah in our midst? Evil do, does not come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion is plowed like a field, and Jerusalem becomes heaps, and the mountains of the house like a wooded height. All right, what is he getting at with that scripture? Who is he talking about in that scripture? Micah 3 and 11. Let's take a look at that real quick. Go ahead, Brother KJV. I Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, well, you already got it. <laughs> I was I don't want to steal your thunder. I was going to say when we go back to verse, uh, you know, verse 11, um, it says the heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire and the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon Yahuwah. So it go, and it goes on and says and say is not Yahuwah among us. None evil can come um, upon us. What we have here, this is, you know, basically is direct. It's what we say time and time over again. So we so we don't we don't want to just sound like, oh, hey, this is where you come to just hear people, you know, bash a bunch of people that don't know what they're talking about. This is the Bible saying these same things. Right. Mm -hmm. It goes on. It says, yet they call or lean on the name of the Lord. What you have here, people, is an example of taking the Lord's name in vain. A lot of people confuse that with profanity, right? They carry the name of the of what they call the Lord, which is Yahuwah, but they do it in vain. They're taking it in vain. You see what I'm saying? Because they're doing they're not they're not in order. They're teaching for money. They're 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 praying for money. Like oh you you send a seed sow a seed of a thousand dollars you know, you, you and, and and we got prayer. We got people. We got phone call. Uh, uh, was operators are standing by to take you. It's, why not just pray for the people right there on the spot? Mm -hmm. There is no scripture that requires money. And in actuality, the dude that tried to buy the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? He got he got he got reprimanded for that. You don't know say like what you do. Hey, we don't do that here. You don't come up here to hey the Holy is the Holy Spirit for sale. Things like that. Mm -hmm. This is why you have in all your churches where. I say it time and time again, they don't, you know, they open it up, read one verse, but they don't believe anything from cover to cover that this Bible is saying. 
when we look at Micah chapter three, verse 11, it, you know, it, it kind of sums everything up in a nutshell. Okay. And then it says, and yet they lean on the most high and say, the, um, is not the most high in our midst, right? That's where you get that prosperity preaching. I, I hope you remember the video I was playing with the uh, pastor. I don't know his name, but he's the guy on the far right, right? And he was like, my blessings is coming tonight, All right? And then he had the people walking up, throwing the money on the steps, so on and so forth. Yeah, he knew how his bills was getting paid, right? But you're supposed to receive yours in some supernatural way. You know, when you're not keeping the law, statutes and commandments. But understand that these brothers are paid in full. Right. They're prayed. They're they're paid in full. Her price is divine for a price. Now, I remember I don't know if you remember the uh, what is it called? The show from back in the day called The Preachers of Hollywood or something like that. And they had Bishop Noel Jones and um, uh, uh, uh the one guy I, I used to know all of those dudes when I was into that. But anyways, there was a guy that said if the church can't come up with five thousand dollars, you know, what I'm saying then this ain't the ministry for them. You know, he said if they can't get together and collect five thousand dollars to have him come and preach in their church, then that's not the ministry for them. So if you go on TBN Network and you'll see brother uh, T.D. Jakes pimping for money. You know what I'm saying? Getting folks to call in, hit that number, you know, sow that seed and blah, 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 right? Who is their God? Hmm? Who is their God? It's very important. Just like when we talk about um, how many people are listening to me and brother KJV compared to how many people are listening to T.D. Jakes and, and Dr. Creflo Dollar. You know what I'm saying? When a rich man speaks, they shut their mouth. You know what I'm saying? And they extol everything he says up to the clouds. Okay. I have, I was sitting up there watching. It wasn't, uh, yeah, I think it was last, last Sunday. I was watching the, the sermon or the service of Providence Baptist Church. And then, you know what I'm saying? And I don't, uh, never mind. I don't want to go there. It's just crazy that don't, they don't want, they don't want the truth, but they want to, clamor behind foolishness and then the crazy part is somebody who is one of my friends on facebook who is uh who was openly gay you know what i'm saying was talking about how good the service was okay no rebuke no correction and righteousness so that the man and woman of elohim may be thoroughly furnished under all good works none of that no change okay it is what it is. Who is your um, God? I'm about uh, yeah. thinking about that mess. But go ahead, brother KJV. Uh, so, so the question was asked: uh, Who is who is their God? And uh, as we know, we can't serve Elohim and Mammon, mm -hmm. right? Um, Mammon is that that's an actual thing. You know, I, I try to be mindful of the things. Uh, uh, you know, because I know there's a lot of new people learning, but that's an actual. You know, that, that's like let's just call it an actual gin or or or. Or, or thing that's an actual thing right so what i'm gonna do i just want, real quick because you had bought the scripture out earlier i want people to understand that these words are not empty right when you're bringing out those scriptures that these words are not empty so what i want to do is read what you know the the definition of mammon right and anybody can go and look this up on on, on the google and it says wealth regarded as an evil influence or false object of worship and devotion. OK, so when we have well, I'm going to read it again. Wealth regarded as an evil influence. Mm -hmm. Right. What we read over in Ecclesiasticus, you know, uh, they, they they oh they listen to the rich man. Right. He has that evil influence because of his wealth or false object of worship and devotion. Right. So people understand when you got these 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 people like Creflo Dollar, you know, all these guys, T.D. Jakes, all these guys, and they're getting all this pay. But they haven't taught you anything like you go in there and it feels good and they give you a basic message like, yeah, it's wrong to sell drugs. 
and you up there cheering because because that's that's common sense. But you have not grown spiritually. You see what I'm saying? You got the heathen out here. Know that the heathen out here, you know, they walk around, you know, the nations and they know not to kill each other. You see what I'm saying? Y'all let some man drag you into a into a dead, a dead sepulcher. To, but because it's dressed up and it looks pretty, he tells you a whole bunch of scriptures. Y'all give him a, a or don't tell you a whole bunch of scriptures. He tells you a whole bunch of platitudes and common sense stuff. Y'all give him a whole bunch of money and y'all went to church and he y'all sh showed up so he could tell you what you already knew. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what you come over here, you, you knock on my door. And I'm going to show you how to prepare a cup of water, right? If that's what we're doing. Long story short, we got to do better. We have to exercise discernment because these people are dealing in and playing in evil spiritual grounds, whether they know it or not. When Creflo Dollar got up there and said, hey, you're not supposed to keep the law. Satan wants you to keep the law. That lets you know who he is. Mm -hmm. All right. And and. You know, people be mindful, even those that watch, you know, you say, I guess that you say Providence got a live stream now. Lord have mercy. But anyway, <laughs> you know, even people who are watching these things put test everything. You know, it tells us over in First Thessalonians, you know, prove all things to test everything and hold fast to the good part. Test test what the minister here is saying. It's going to be hard to do because when you go look it up, it's going to be right there in the scriptures. But when you go look up all these these other Cadillac pastors out there. And you test what they're doing, what they're saying, you're going to find that half of what they're saying is not even what the scriptures are saying. Okay. Okay. And then a lot of people forsake the fact that or miss the point that sometimes the most high will place something in your midst. All right. Just to weigh it on a scale. Like, how much does this thing mean to you? Now, if I ask you to give it up for me, would you do it? Nine times out of 10, the answer is no. Right. Nine times out of 10, the answer is no. They'll make a compromise, so on and so forth. Just as when we read in Mark 10, 17 through 31 about the rich young ruler. Had to bring him up. Had to bring him up because there's a lot of people, even though they're following these people, like Sister Nicole brought out, uh, uh, what, what did she say his name was? Uh, Dr. Had, Leroy, Dr. Leroy Thompson. Yeah, Dr. Leroy Thompson. That was his dude. Money, 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 money. Yeah, there, there's people that follow these people, you know what I'm saying? And they assume that they could please the most high and themselves too, right? So just going back, we're not going to teach uh, the rich young ruler again. You know, we go over him a lot because there's a lot to take away. But listen, he says, and as he was setting out of the way, one come running and kneel before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting life? And, and yeah, Yahweh Shai said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except one, and that's Elohim. You know the commandments, right? He's trying to get into heaven. He wants to know how to get there, so on and so forth. Um, even if, when, and then when you read it in Matthews, he says, um, if you want to have eternal life, keep the commandments. Christ says it plain and simple. But listen, he says, you know the commands. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not rob. Respect your father and your mother. He says, and he answering him says, teacher, all these I have watched over from my youth. And Yahweh Shai, looking at him, loved him and said to him, one matter you lack. Okay. You had all of those blessings, but look at the thing that you lack. He says, go sell all your possessions and give to the poor and you shall have treasure in heaven. And come follow me, taking up the stake. But he, being sad at this word, went away grieved, for he had many possessions. Now, if we back up to Brother Creflo Dollar, right? Creflo Dollar said that if God wants to bless, if God, uh, God doesn't want you broke, okay? God doesn't want you broke. He wants you rich. And that Matthew was his accountant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus, even though he said that foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the man, son of man has nowhere to lay his head. This man said that, you know what I'm saying, Christ wasn't lowly or anything. He was rich. You know what I'm saying? So on and so forth. I mean, you have to understand who these dudes are, you know what I'm saying, and who they're following. But sometimes you will be blessed. Like we just said before, you're blessed to be a blessing, right? But at the same time, sometimes that blessing is a test. 
in itself, right? Do you really love the most high? Hmm? You have to understand that Satan knows how to bait that hook. Satan can bait his hook with everything that you think you, you need, this, that, and the third. But sometimes there's a flip to it. You have to give up. You have to give up something in exchange for it, right? Let's continue on. He says, Yahweh Shai looking around said to his taught ones, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter into the kingdom of Elohim? And the taught ones were astonished at his words. Yahweh Shai responded, said to them, uh, children, how hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of Elohim? He says, it is easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Wow. Right. That's how hard it is for you to get over yourself. Right. Some of those things are left on a scale. What means more to you? What's the first command? It's actually a test of the first com or the greatest commandment. Greatest commandment is to love Elohim with all your what? Heart, mind, strength. OK. It is what it is. People will leave that for this temporary uh, uh, monetary thing that they can't take with them. He says, and they were a measure. Oh, well, excuse me. He says, it is easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of Elohim. And they were immeasurably astonished, saying among themselves, well, who then can be saved? Hmm? If it's that hard for them, well, who can be saved? He says, and looking at them, Yahweh Shai, he says, with men, oh, Yahweh Shai said, with men it is impossible, with, but with Elohim. Uh, says, but not with Elohim, for with Elohim all is possible. And then Kepha began to say to him, Let's see, we left everything and followed you. Right? That's what that's what the test is. Can you leave everything? Can you okay? Can you leave the church and follow the truth? Hmm? For the sake of the most high? Can you? He says, See, we left all and followed you. Yahweh said to him. Truly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for the sake of me and the good news who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come everlasting life. But many are first, but many who are first shall be last and the last shall be first. OK, that people don't really understand how deep that message actually is, especially when we're dealing with uh, the love of money, the context of the uh, or the context of, uh, of this Bible study lesson, so on and so forth. He said he said a mouthful. Right. A lot of people can't leave. You have you have a lot of preachers, so on and so forth. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Shanique Cameron. You have a lot of preachers who refuse to tell the truth because of, you know what I'm saying, them losing their status, them losing members, them losing money, them losing influence. Okay? It is what it is. Certain things, the most high has to, has to uh, mean more than certain things, okay? He says, and they were immeasurably astonished, saying amongst themselves, who else is able to be saved? I already said all of this, right? All right, so let's keep moving. <clears throat> For the love of money, okay? One of the things that people don't really understand that the structure of money is to put you in debt, keep you in debt, make you a debt slave, right? Debt is a form of slavery, okay? Debt is a form of slavery. Too many people, Will Smith says, too many people uh, spend money they haven't earned to buy things they don't need. To impress people they don't like. Mm. Okay. You haven't earned it because they, they put you in this credit system. All right. You can pay it off later. You can buy it now. You know what I'm saying? But you can pay it off later. So on and so forth. Debt is a form of slavery. Israelites who became what? Indentured were so simply to pay off a debt. If you understand that if, when the scripture is talking about slavery. You know what I'm saying? And putting your brother in slavery, so on and so forth. He says, but in the year of Jubilee, all debts were forgiven. Thus, all slaves were set free. Now, when you lease a vehicle, you are placing yourself in debt slavery. When you rent your house or 
apply for any type of loan, you are placing yourself in debt slavery. The capitalist society puts up the front that it's doing you a favor by extending you credit. But simply put, debt is slavery. If you are paying attention, you'll see that uh, so-called blacks are only out to try to outdo one another. Okay. You, you sit up there, you you go this, that, and the third, and then you come back to the field or to the hood, you know what I'm saying, to stun on people that look just like you, right? When he and she flexes on the next person with what they got, they have access, uh, uh, with what they got and have access to is simply to show off how much better they have it than the people who look like them, right? That's like that picture I usually, I used to put up with the, um, with the slave in chains and he's sitting there painting it gold hmm it's crazy it's crazy our people um perish for a lack of knowledge now some people refuse to be broke but i refuse to be ignorant all right it is what it is uh what is the only debt that we should have according to the scriptures hmm? i meant to blend this in so you couldn't read it right away but it's in Romans chapter 13 and 7. He says, render therefore to all what is due to them. Tax to whom is taxes due, uh, toll to whom toll. It says, fear to whom fear, respect whom respect. It says, owe no man any matter except to love one another. For he who loves another has filled Torah. Right? And Go ahead, Brother KJV, because there's another point I want to bring out about that before I uh, move to the next slide. But go ahead, bro. Um, yeah, just touching on on the, uh, what you said previously on the uh, previous slide about debt being slavery. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people this, you know, oftentimes myself and, you know, we all know the scripture, that, you know, in Proverbs 22 and seven, it says um, the rich ruleth over the poor and the uh, borrower is servant to the lender. Right. Mm -hmm. Why is this important, people? Everything you all see going on in your country right now is. And and, and 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 for everybody out there who drifting off, wake up. You know, I'm going to make a point here. Um, everything you see going on in the country right now with the higher prices and things like that. And people aren't asking the right questions about what's going on. Now I say, oh, he about to make it political. Oh, no, I ain't going to make it political. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it financial for you. Right. When we look at um, the situation with gas, food, things like that. But yet. Your leadership, your government has not come out and say, you know what? Gas prices are too high. We're going to do a tax holiday, you know, for, for, for a couple of months. Your food prices go high. Well, for us, you know, in other states, I know Ohio, when you go into the grocery store, you don't pay taxes on food per se. But in general, all your taxes are high. Every, the cost of everything is going up, right? The reason they're not giving you a tax holiday is because taxes are attached to slavery, right? That's one of the reasons I chose to like, hey, leave the workforce, right? Taxes are attached to slavery. How? Because they can't legally enslave you. So what they do, they make you work and then say right now in the United States, you know, I know someone, she makes good money and her tax percent comes out to about 40% after federal, state and local taxes, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's almost 50 percent. That means you can work a whole year and only six months really counts. That means they got you working for free and you're turning over that money. Now, Tyrone, where are you going with this with the high prices? The higher something costs, the more taxes it is on it. If, if, if you want to put this to the test, you go to the store and you buy your old Atari 2600, you know, on eBay or something versus trying to go out and buy one of those newer computers or gaming systems. Not only will you pay the higher price, but you have to pay that higher tax amount, right? Because mm -hmm. the country is going broke and, and a lot of, I'm not going to try to get off into a diatribe, but because we are touching on that subject of money and to keep the people enslaved, this is, they have to raise the prices. What's mm -hmm. happening. You got people quitting their jobs, starting their own businesses and all these things. They have to figure out how to get that money from somewhere. Right. And I know it sounds complicated, but I'm trying to, you know, trying to keep it simple and concise. But the higher the prices, the more taxes your government can extract from you. You see what I'm saying? Keeping you 
in, in that form of slavery, keeping you in that 40 percent slavery. What am I saying? Well, if you got one Negro and he's doing 50, paying 50 percent taxes, you paying 50 percent taxes, half and half equals one slave. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Do the math, people. You see, that's why when we go into the scriptures, you know, you could used to be able to own your property. Like, yeah, I own this house, but do I really own the house? Let me not pay the taxes on it and see and see what uh, California Newsom come by and, and say, hey, bro, you need to pay these taxes or you, you're going to have to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it's a form of continued slavery. That's why it says the borrower is serving to the lender. And so even 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 rich people, you know, the Drake and all these cats out up, up here in Calabasas and all that stuff. It, it don't matter. Let them not pay them taxes on them homes. Now, yeah, they got it. I get it. I get what people, oh, well, they got, they ain't no issue for them. That's not the point. The point is the continued cycle of slavery, right? Mm. And they, and, and people are enslaved through the tax system. What is it? Because there is a such thing as a righteous tax. That righteous tax, according to the scriptures, mm -hmm. is 20%, mm. right? The, the, you know, Joseph deals with that over in Genesis. But once you get past 25, 35, 40 percent, you're dealing with something totally different. All right. My apologies. I got to get off on a tangent, man. No, that's why we're here, fam. That's why we're here. We're here for edification. Right. But as for as far as the scriptures say, all right. Oh, no man. Right. Any matter except to love one another for he who loves another has filled Torah. Now, you have to be careful when some people, when pastors try to bring this scripture out, they say, you know, according to the world's definition of love, you fulfilled the Torah and the law is done away with. Nah, that's not what the scriptures is talking about. That's why we brought out Ecclesiastes chapter 29, who's talking about when you give to your brother, you are fulfilling to your brother in need. You know what I'm saying? You are fulfilling the Torah, says it right there. That's in the Torah for you to do it. That's exactly what this scripture is talking about. <clears throat> so I had to bring that point out. But just to uh, uh, add to the credence of everything we're talking about, we're talking about capitalism. We talked about the uh, prosperity preachers. We have to also throw in there, okay, the fact, because the good brother brought out the fact that we are in today's time and people are going into business for themselves. You have to understand that the love of money places our people in compromising positions to put it you know what i'm saying to put it mildly if i could just say that mildly you know what i'm saying puts them in compromising positions right let's look what is, any anybody hip to only fans or revolt huh you we you've heard of it now don't, <laughs> don't get shy on me now we've heard of it now i ain't saying that you actually you know what i'm saying back in the day we had the 800 number you know what i'm saying <laughs> I ain't gonna say, oh well, yeah, never mind. We had the 900 number back in the day where you called and it was two dollars a minute, you know what I'm saying, to hear somebody say blah 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 blah. But, anyways, you have to understand that the, the economy has stretched, and then a lot of it, no, I ain't gonna go there. The economy has stretched a lot of people to put themselves, you know what I'm saying, in compromising positions or the love of money putting them in compromising positions and it's sad when you see them you know what i'm saying with no knowledge of, of self no uh knowledge of the scriptures so on and so forth no instruction and in righteousness you see them and all you can say is man daughters sons of zion right daughters and sons of zion this is you're putting yourself in compromising positions don't let this be you all right you have to understand that the um because i was gonna go into that but we don't need all of that sons and daughters of zion uh are covered in more ways than one modest and blessed above all others they don't want to give those things up you know what i'm saying for this now a lot of these individuals had to make some compromises in order to reach this place reach this plateau all right they had to sell their souls like uh, uh snoop dog had the song called he sold his soul to the devil you know what i'm saying murder was the case that they gave me kanye west he's you know what i'm saying what did he say he uh sold his soul to the devil you know what I'm saying he knew it was a crappy deal but at least it came with a few toys like a happy meal you know what i'm saying crazy bars eminem 
same thing. You have to understand while the subject matter and which these individuals uh, rap and sing about, so on and so forth, is wicked. All right. These same wild acting celebrities have wives and families and their children go to private school. OK, their life is not what they put on screen for you to eat up. Hmm. But if they were to speak about their real life, about their real wife, or about their family and their children in private school, getting an education, this, that, and the third, they wouldn't make any money. They songs wouldn't get played. So they have to feed you that wickedness, so on and so forth. And they're doing that while selling you that, you know what I'm saying, all women are dots and bees. And they ain't ish. Remember Snoop Dogg had that song? Women ain't ish, but blahzy blah. Huh? He was saying that, but this was him in real life. Hmm. For the love of money. Hebrews chapter 13 and 5 says, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because Elohim has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. For some people, that ain't enough. Right? For some people, they want their heaven now. So they'll do like the Snoop Dogs in them and sell their souls, you know what I'm saying, so that they can get, you know what I'm saying, rich now. Oh, how we used to say it. So they can live now and die later. Okay? When the object is to die to yourself now so you can live later. Right? Go ahead, brother KJV. Oh uh, yeah, so um, uh, oh yeah, I was just turning the turning the pages. Um, so one one of the things going back to that previous slide, um, you know, because you have a lot of uh, you know, you know, demonic stuff going on in the ent entertainment industry. So people say, okay, well, we heard this phrase "selling of the soul," right? Um, so you know, we have to understand that me and you, we already went through the the stuff two, three, four, five years ago, all the information that was out there that is no longer available to some of the new listeners. So just, just to catch everybody up to speed, generally there's a couple of choices they get to make, right? Um, once you agree to whatever thing that that is, you have to choose either somebody in your family has to go, you know what I'm saying? They, they end up killing somebody in your family. Um, a lot of people say, okay, hey, this is what happened with you know, Kanye West mom, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, or they have to, you know, you know, plug you in, you know, with, with some, some homosexual homosexuality type things. So they, they go and they, they plug you in your backside. Right. You know what I'm saying? They doing doing all these wicked, you know, you know, I got to be careful what I say because YouTube would uh, try to take the video down. Mm -hmm. But they're doing, you know, um, men on men activities and, 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 they, and they're recording it, things like that. That's what some people say, you know, um, you know, some of the situations that, you know, Will Smith had to deal with allegedly. You're right. I'm, I'm just going to throw allegedly out there on all this stuff. Uh, so people say, well, Tyrone, how, how do you verify this? Well, you go and look up. Well, like the brother brought up the, the uh, song Murder Was the Case That They Gave Me. Right now, I remember as clear as day as a kid, Snoop Dogg in that courtroom. You know what I'm saying? fighting for his life, praying for his life. You see what I'm saying? Things like that, right? And what happens is when these people don't live up to their part of the deal, they end up, you know, getting exposed, losing all they have, like take R. Kelly, R. Kelly for example, right? You know what I'm saying? If, you, if he's not living up to his part of the deal, now, you know, hey, he's in, he's in prison or, or in jail, or whatever. They say, okay, you know what? You remember you did this, this, and this? This is very real. I, and, and the reason I bring all this out is to say, you know, a lot of this stuff is tied to, you know, Freemasonry, you know, things like that. Some people call it even further and call it, you know, the Illuminati. Right. Understand, people, all these things are real. You have to go and re you may have to go and research it on your own. So, you know, the Good Brothers videos don't get flagged or taken down. You know what I'm saying? Because even me saying the the, the Illumin, Illumin word, they'll put a warning on that because they, they, they'll actually, everything we're saying is being closed captioned by the computer. They'll mm -hmm. they'll catch that word and there'll be a warning on this video, right? So so people have to go and research those things. But when you're dealing with like satanic things like Freemasonry, uh, Eastern stars, that's that's like 
the the epitome top level of Satanism. Right. That's where they get a lot of these these practices from. OK, mm -hmm. so people have to be very mindful of that a lot of your entertainers are Freemasons. That's right. why they do like certain hand signs and things like that. Right. Uh, when we go back to um, I think it was, uh, you know, Bill Cosby. Right. When he was doing an interview and he was going through all his stuff a few years back. You know what I'm saying? And he was he was sitting in a chair and he was doing a certain hand sign, a Freemason hand sign that meant, you know, like he's communicating, begging for mercy, things like that. You meet certain people the way that they shake your hand. They'll be testing you to see if you're one of them all in all those different handshakes. All that stuff is openly available online. That's right. Well, people be mindful of what you get yourself into. I, I don't I, I'm careful when I talk about these things because people will go and they'll dive into this stuff and then they'll start getting into witchcraft and all these things that Freemasonry and all this stuff is tied to. Mm -hmm. If people if you have any any type of generational curses in your home and your and your father's a mason or your mom's a mason and all this stuff and your grandpa was and all these things and y'all wonder why oh well such and such has been going on in the family or this that and the other you know look around what's in your home be mindful of these things everything is tied together everything is tied together but not getting off track sticking with the um you know with the the music industry thing entertainment industry thing so it's not just a music thing. It's an entertainment industry thing. A lot of times you'll see uh, certain things that, that are a little bit peculiar or, or off. And understand, because because people say, oh, well, well, I want some proof. I want I want to see this. I want to see that. You know what I'm saying? Understand it doesn't always come in the form of, of what you're looking for, where somebody's sitting down and and there's a, a guy, a red guy across the table with some horns sticking out of his head. You know, it's a little bit more co covert than that. Mm -hmm. Right. But you, they have to do things. The, 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 the one eye symbolism, you'll see them on there. I don't want to do it because, you know, some hater will come along and they'll freeze frame and say, oh, this brother, look what Zephaniah is doing. He got this brother on here covering his eye. But, you know, mm -hmm. when you see all that, go back and look at your old album covers like Brandy and all this stuff. And then you'll see a lot of them. They have it where part of their face is out of the frame and you can only see one eye. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the, the good brother, he can pull up some examples later on and put them on screen, things like that. But you will see it for yourself. That's one eye symbolism. They have to communicate. This is a form of communication. This is, is it goes very, very, very deep. And, yep. and I remember touching on these things and, you know, several years back and a couple of cats that we went to school with, especially over there in, in, in Mansfield, that 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 satanic that satanic stuff run deep over there with that Freemason stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and that and that what's that? What else is it called? The uh, the Eastern Eastern Witch, the Eastern Eastern Stars, the Eastern Stars, high uh, Satanism to the highest, right? So okay. it, it, it's crazy, but that's all I got, man. All right, let's get uh, Isaiah chapter fifty-five. Okay, let's get Isaiah chapter fifty-five. Let's look at verses one through nine. Real quick. Right. He says, Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Right. Because we already know the most high takes care of his own. And he's telling you, you can leave all of these things. You desire you delight yourself in him. He'll give you the desires of your heart. He says, Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no silver, come buy and eat. Come buy wine, milk without silver and without price. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread and your labor for what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and let your being delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come to me here so that your so that your being lives. Right. So that your being lives. And let me let me make an everlasting covenant with you the trustworthy kindness of Dawi. See, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. See, a nation you do not know, you shall call, and a nation who does not know you, run to you. Because of Yahya Elohim and the set-apart one of Israel, and he has adorned you. Seek Yah while he is to be found, call on him while he is near, 
Let the wrong forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Yah who has compassion on him and to our Elohim, for he pardons much. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, declares Yah. For the heavens are higher than the earth, or excuse me, Salakia, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts, right? <clears throat> the Most High has put it plainly. You dealing with money, money, thinking money is the thing when it comes, when when I bring this thing full circle, okay, you ain't going to be able to pay for it, right? You're not going to be able to pay for it. In Psalms 119 verses 36 through 38, he says, incline my ear, or excuse me, uh, climb my, incline my heart to your witness and not to own gain. Turn away my eyes from looking at falsehood and revive in me your way. Establish your word to your servant, which leads to the fear of you, right? This should be your attitude and your prayer, okay? Looking at, uh, let's, matter of fact, I did this for fun, but I meant to do this earlier. What you call it says, Ecclesiastes chapter 29, verses four through five, right? You ever heard that saying, your funky $20? Here, that's what this is talking about in the scriptures, right? Your, your funky $20. <laughs> Here go your funky $20. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't funky when I lend it to you. <laughs> that's hilarious. But when he <laughs> says, listen, verses four and five, he says, many, when a thing was lent them, reckon it to be found and put them in tr to trouble that helped them till he has received. He will kiss a man's hand and for his neighbor's money, he will speak submissively. But when he should repay, <laughs> but when he should repay, he will prolong the time and return words of grief and complain at the time. Come on, man. Yo, bro. <laughs> Say, go your funky $20 in the scriptures. That's hilarious. But let's get to Matt. Let's get Matthew 6 and 33. We're almost done. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek first the kingdom of Elohim. Right. This is your instructions. Seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness. Right. This scripture always brings you back to the law, statutes and commandments. Right. Regardless if the if the rich preacher, if the rich preacher and everybody extolling his words to the clouds, if that's that if that's still you, that's too bad. Seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim and his righteousness, and all these matters shall be added to you, right? Precept that with Ecclesiastes 5 and 10, he says, He who loves silver is not satisfied with silver, nor he who loves wealth and increase. That too is futile. You ever notice, no matter how rich an individual becomes, they're trying to get to the next level, okay? LeBron, he just made a billionaire, Right. He, you know, what I'm saying being rich, being in that circle, there's always another circle that you ain't rich enough to join. So they're trying to reach that. Listen, man, listen what the scriptures say. Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. He who loves silver is not satisfied with silver. Right. No matter if you hit the lottery, you know, what I'm saying you might have more money than you had yesterday. But at the same time, you want more. Nor he who loves wealth and increase. That too is futile, right? And hopping into the conclusion, all right? 2 Corinthians 4 and 18, right? One of the reasons why, and then we also bring Deuteronomy 7 and 6, because people don't know that they are the apple of the Most High's eye. They are royalty, okay? The, the fact of who they are makes them rich. When we read in Revelations, he says, and I know of thy poverty, but thou art rich. Hmm. It is what it is. He says, for thou art set apart people unto Yahweh thy Elohim. Yahweh thy Elohim has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's that's your rich status. OK, that thing you shouldn't take for granted. But let's look. Your wealth is not tied to money, uh, to money, riches and possessions. OK, that's not what your wealth is tied to. It is instead tied to your life in the most high. OK, 
It is instead tied to your life in the most high. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal. That word temporal means temporary. Right. But things which are not seen are eternal. Right. The most highest word is blessed. Brother KJV, that's that's all we got on the slides. 33 of them. I didn't know I had that many, but, you know, it is what it is. Come give us some wisdom, Mark. We're going to cut out. Uh, yes, sir. So um, understand, people, that, um, you know, it isn't it isn't the money that's evil. It's the love of money, which is the root of all evil. Um, it's important because a lot of times people say, oh, oh, uh, you know, the you know, money is evil or money bring. You know, it's the love of money. You know, which it, which it talks about in the scriptures. Uh, we're not saying don't, you know, help your brother, your sister or what have you. Uh, what we're saying is, you know, be mindful, uh, you know, understand what you're doing. Always, always be aware and take heed to the wisdom that is given in, in Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 29. Take heed to that wisdom and notice that you'll see these these same behaviors. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we went into uh, Psalms chapter 37 and, you know, the scripture I brought out of there says, you know, the, the wicked borroweth and repayeth not. So this, you know, hey, you may have some people who have done you wrong in the past, but the scriptures give you ways of, of identifying these people. All right. So, um, you know, like I said, it's OK to, you know, it's OK to help people, things like that. But the Bible gives us ways of knowing how to go about that. When we go into it, let me, let me grab that scripture real quick. It's going to be over in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. So this is also in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiasticus. Um, I'm going to go to chapter 12. And we touched on some of these last week. But it goes on, it says, here it says in verse 2, Do good to the godly man, and thou shalt find a recompense, and if not from him, yet from the Most High. Okay? Okay. Uh, goes on and says, there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms, right? So it's okay to give a little bit of, you know, charity, prayers, things like that. But verse four, it tells you, give to the godly man and help not a sinner, right? Now, people will say, well, Tyrone, how do I know, you know, somebody, he's homeless, you know, does that mean, oh, he ain't an Israelite? Just, you know, kick him in the ass and just keep on walking? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, like, say, if I see a person out there and that person may not be, you know, at a certain point of knowledge or what have you, but you can still show compassion. You might you might not give him your wallet, but you might say, hey, brother, you know, are you hungry or something like that? And a lot of times what I, I would. Right, you froze. You froze up, good brother, brother KJV. You told me you asked me to count how many times that happened. Uh, doesn't look like he's making a return either. His freeze might be permanent. All right, but we we do understand what the good brother's talking about. He's he's basically telling you that everything that we're talking about in the scriptures is confirmed by the scriptures, right? There's a lot of people that get upset with us for telling the truth, like a lot of people do. We say, uh, don't get mad, get smart, and prove prove us wrong, right? Don't get mad, all right? Get smart and prove me wrong. The good brother KJV said, give me a second, right? A lot of this stuff is, is not debatable, all right? Because the word already confirms it. It is what it is. And the, the biggest point that a lot of religious people miss is that this thing that the world has them going in a circle about, all right, that thing was designed to keep you distracted and to keep you on the wrong side of things, right? So we have to get back to doing it the most highest way. Um, I'm waiting on the good brother, KJV, to pop back in. He says, give him a second. I think it's his stuff uh, uh, handicapped him for real, for real this time. But uh, let me go ahead and get some shout outs in while I'm waiting on the good brother to come back. <clears throat> All right. Shabbat Shalom, Sister uh, Yasatari De La Paz, Sister Yolanda Hayes. Uh, thanks for being in the building. Sister Shiata Israel, always good to see you. Um, Sister Alice Bronson, Brother Emmanuel Bronson. 
uh who else did i have brother kaim elizier benny's benny's real good to see you ak matter of fact uh brother brother kaim hit the link um if if not this week hit the link next week rock um Zanaya Ta, uh, Tazu. Oh, that's Zai. I'm sorry. Zai, hi. How you doing? All right. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Um, sister Shanique Cameron was in the building. My sister Nikki uh, Colleen was in the building. Of course, we had the good brother KJV. Uh, still waiting on him. He hasn't popped back in yet. Huh? Who? Oh, Jason Jackson over in YouTube land. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, of course, Sister uh, Nicole Marie, uh, Kahaba Judah. Good to see you. All right. All right. My sister uh, Yasatari De La Paz said, thanks for the study. Lots of confirmation. It, it, it really is. And it's crazy how when, when you're in the scriptures and you don't just read the scriptures, but you study the scriptures. Um all of this stuff makes a lot of sense. Like when we're looking at the world today, it, it should make sense because in the scriptures, the most high said it plainly, especially like if you, like we said before, if you don't have any, if you don't have an apocrypha and you can't uh, have access to Ecclesiasticus and especially uh, chapter 12, you're not just chapter 12, but chapter 12, 29, 13, we go, we've been in there a lot lately, right? You have to understand that uh, there he is. A lot of that, a lot of the meat, you know what I'm saying, that you need for everyday living is hidden in that apocrypha. And one of the reasons it's hidden in the apocrypha is because, you know what I'm saying, it pinpoints to today's time. It's showing you how relevant the scriptures is, right? Uh, go ahead, brother KJV. Finish your point, Ak, and we're going to get up out of here. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, I don't know what, what part I got cut off on. Um uh, what what was the point? I mean, like, what was the part that I, I stopped talking so I can just go back and just finish what I was going to say on that? Do you remember by chance? Um, I was getting ready to talk about like Ecclesiastes and just, um, you know, I was breaking down. the yeah, it was uh, around that time. All right. So I'll just go through it real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times people will ask, how do we determine who who we give to, who we don't give to, things like that? Um, and one easy way, you know, if, you know, to do that is by observing what we see over here in Sirach or Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And I uh, started by reading uh, uh, 12 verse 2. It says, do good to the go uh, godly man and thou shalt find a recompense, if not from him, yet from the most high. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. Give to the godly man and help not a sinner. Right. So. Um, when talking about these things, um, one of the things that people say, well, how do we know if this person's a godly man or not? Right. And everybody has a different measure of, you know, where, or where they're at in their walk. So say, for example, if I see someone out, sometimes I may say, OK, hey, I'm not going to hand over my wallet. Like I said previously, before, I guess my feet had already cut, but I won't just I'm not going to hand them over my wallet. But I may say, hey, brother, you're hungry. You want to get some food or or give them or give them a sandwich or buy them some food, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. Because we have to also understand that at one point in time, from a spiritual perspective, you know, we might be saying, oh, we're doing well in life, this, that and the other. But spiritually, like what we see with the rich young ruler, he was doing well in life, but spiritually he was homeless. You see, let that sink in. So we could be doing we could be doing well spiritual. I mean, we could be doing well financially, but spiritually, at one point in time, we were that person that we sometimes see on the street. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's, uh, it was, uh, you know, very important. I know that um, throughout the study that a couple of people made a good uh, couple of comments. I know um, Yada. I can't I can't say these names, but um, has said something uh, to the effect about the you know thinking on the taxes and things like that um i didn't, I didn't really get a chance to uh, point that out but um i don't know if you can go back she was on facebook mm -hmm. and a couple people on youtube that made some comments i don't know how many of the comments you had already addressed while i was offline i don't know if it was uh isn't capitalism yeah. the foundations of this nation and then it was the one after that 
It was the one she made after that. Uh, yeah, it says, okay. um, it says, I was thinking about taxes slash slavery yesterday. Yeah, they, they're basically one in the same unrighteous taxes. Right. So when the, uh, when the minister brought out Micah, uh, chapter three, verse 11, all, one of the things it touches on in there is the judges. Right. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of the wicked judges. A lot of people don't know that. Right. But it was destroyed because of the wicked, the wicked judges. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, when we go into the um, the hidden scriptures, we'll see it was a dude. He rolled up. I think it was. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I think it might have been some dude named Eliezer or something. He rolled up. And um, long story short, he gets into a confrontation with a guy. The guy busts him upside the head with a rock. And the guy says, hey, I just hit you in the head with this rock. You got to pay me for that blood that's coming from your head. And a guy looking at him like he's crazy, like you hit me with a rock and I need to pay you. This is in the scriptures, right? I can pull it. You know, I think it's in Jasher or something. But he he drags the, the man before the wicked judge. Mm -hmm. Right. And the judge says, well, this is how we do in our land. You need to pay this man because he busts you upside the head with this rock. And people, it's going to sound funny. Somebody's probably even laughing. Right. But this actually happened. This is actually, you know, in scripture. So. The, the guy says, OK, he takes a rock and he busts the head upside. He busts the judge upside the head with a rock and he tells the judge, he's like, OK, well, you pay him instead. Then You see what I'm saying? That's how that's how crazy it was. When we look at Micah chapter 11, you know what I'm saying? It mentions, you know, the judges take the bribes, so on and so forth. All right. Judges aren't just judges that are sitting on your court. Your judges are also sometimes those who are making the rules, your 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 Congress. Your, your state officials. Right. So judges, judges, there's a little bit of play. So, you know, for lack of a better term, there's a little bit of play in that word when we're talking about judges. All right. So people have to understand that, you know, a lot of times, you know, you'll you'll see that with the taxes, why your taxes are going up, because these wicked judges know that they can make money off of that. They can make that bribery off of that. Right. Uh, it says with inflation, people will be working more, paying more taxes. Actually, that's a very good point. Um, it's, 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 it's part of a self-sustaining, uh, like a reverse self-sustaining cycle. You know what I'm saying? So the more I increase your prices, right? Like the sister said, the more your prices are increased. If your gas costs, you know, you know, like six dollars a gallon, you have to work more. Thereby, you get employ, you get um, taxed more on your income. But then when you leave, keep in mind, they already tax you on the income side of things because people say, well, Tyrone, how you get 50 percent taxes? It's very easy. You get you your federal, state and local. They get in 40. Once you go out, they then retax the dollar that you earned that had already been taxed. This dollar. The good brother cut out again. Hopefully it's just a storm. <clears throat> Brother KJV, you uh froze again, fam. You froze again. I let me let him know again. But uh dang, I said it as one word. But brother KJV, you know what I'm saying? He is uh all right, let's uh all right, there you go, out. Yeah, yeah, so Sorry about that, man. Let me uh let me get this off the screen here. All right. One second. I'm double feeding. There you go. Right. How's your mic? You just muted yourself. Yeah, the mic is good. Um, it's just is uh, was double feeding, but I think it's good now. All right. I'm, I'm catching basically the broadcast is recoming through, so I just got to figure out how to get it shut down on the on the phone. Uh, just turn your volume down on your phone, so you can't hear it. It's not there's no echo coming on on the feed, so it's just you hearing it. All right, I don't know. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Is that working? Yep. All right. So uh, what I was trying to say. Um, 
basically, so how we get to a 50% tax is what happens. Because I don't know at what point I cut out. That but was um, That was it. Okay. Yeah, it's double fees killing me. But basically, so what happens is how we get to the 50% tax is you, when you're working, you get, you, you pay about 40% taxes with state, local, all those things. Then once you go to the cash register, you're retaxed again, generally at an additional between 7.75 to an 8.75% or what have you, right? You're retaxed on money that you had already been taxed on at the point of sale. So it's very important, you know, what the sister has said that, you know, um, how taxes relate to slavery. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry about the quality here. Y'all probably get some type of echo, but, uh, you know, I'm doing this on the phone. And, um, you know, one of the things I want to, you know, uh, leave people with, I pulled some scriptures, but I had to go back to it. And um, give me one second here. Because the echo, the echo was driving me, the echo was driving me crazy here. <laughs> There's no echo on our end, Ak. You might, oh, you okay, might be cool. able to start putting in some earbuds or something. All right. So the scripture, you know, I want to always encourage people to, you know, pay attention to what was said today. It was a lot of great information uh, that the minister brought out, and I wanted to share uh, Romans uh, chapter thirteen, and it's going to be uh, just from verses eleven to fourteen. Um, and just encouraging people for those who are hearing these things for the first time to, uh, you know, repent, you know, uh, get baptized and, uh, you know, saying, you know, get get themselves on track. But when we go into Romans 13, it says uh, verse 11, it says, and that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Mm -hmm. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. But put ye on the master, Yasha Messiah, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So, you know, people understand that, you know, we're at a point where it's time for us to wake up. Um, there's a lot of things going on, you know, in you know, in society with these increased prices and all these things. Um, the scriptures prophesy of famine, things like that. That's your high food prices. So famine don't necessarily mean the food isn't available. If you can't afford the food, that's the same thing as a famine. So it says mm -hmm. here, uh, Sister Nicole says, it's good to be content with what you have because all this fancy stuff don't matter. Desiring all these clothes and stuff is how the system can keep you in bondage. Exactly. Exactly. And the uh, uh, minister brought that scripture out over it. In Isaiah, it touched on all, it touched on that, I believe, where it, it was saying you buy these things that are, you know, that are not even food. You see what I'm saying? And people, there's going to be a lot of people that figure out, you know, when the day comes that they can't eat that Xbox. You know what I'm saying? They go, when, 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 that, when that belly starts going, hitting your spine and you starving. You know what I'm saying? You're going to realize real quick that the Xbox don't taste so good or that that third or fourth car, you know, doesn't taste so good. So it's definitely important that we, you know, we prepare and and, and take heed of the signs that that are all around us. Mm -hmm. And then to uh, the app <laughs> or to piggyback off of what you had said when we you're talking about how when the famine hits, you're going to have to, you know, what I'm saying. Have arms, arm yourself to protect your goo, your your garden, the foods that you um you grew for yourself. Because, like the good brother said, there's gonna come a time when you're gonna be, you know, saying forced, you're gonna have all of this money, but you're not gonna be able to eat money. You're not gonna be able to eat that money. So it's gonna be worthless, you know. Another thing that people uh do is like when they set prices to stuff, that's the faith that they have in that product you know what i'm saying which actually sets the price that thing is valuable to you and that's only in your imagination that's why you're willing to pay those prices for it right but when we also because going back off of what my sister nicole says she says it's good to be content 
with what you with what you have because all this fancy stuff doesn't matter Designing all these clothes and stuff is how the system can keep you in bondage now when we're talking about serving the most high and doing it his way or doing it the world's way we also um as we spoke about with the preachers so on and so forth you you have to get it from the most high right because we ask the question who are they serving they say that they're serving the most high yeah and we gave the scriptures that where they were talking about oh we're rich you know what i'm saying we no evil comes upon us isn't the most high in our midst right if you go to romans chapter 6 in that verse and verse 16 it says do you not know that to whom you present yourself servants for obedience okay you are servants of the one you obey so if the scriptures is telling you to do a thing and the pastor who is rich is telling you to do another thing you are the servant of the one you obey okay and it reads on it says whether of sin to death or obedience to righteousness right so it is what it is and that's verse 13 it says but thanks to elohim that you were servants that uh, you were servants of sin yet obeyed from the heart that from teaching to which you were entrusted i said that all wrong you obey from the heart the teaching okay that you were entrusted so with that being the case brother kjv we appreciate you out all of that wisdom you know what i'm saying spilt over i'm pretty sure um and like sister shiata said it was uh and sister de la paz said <clears throat> that this was a message that you know what i'm saying was confirmation a lot of confirmation um and it it is it was it was something that was easy to do because the most high has been dealing with me with it all week and like i said before that book of ecclesiastics is, is a is a beautiful thing you know what i'm saying it's a beautiful thing it tells you exactly what's going on so you can understand it um and then you know since you can better navigate in this in this world but um when you had cut out before brother kjv i gave shout outs already mm -hmm. so um if you if you were done building then we're gonna go ahead and get up out of here uh yeah i think that's it man um uh, you know excellent study and um uh, you know like i said man you know people it's time to wake up. Notice, notice the things that are going on around you. Even this lesson is a is a way to uh, even this lesson is a way to lead into um, talking, just touching on those things. When we talk, talk I know it sounds like a a, a, a moot point based on, on on all the knowledge and all the food that you brought to to the table today. But even paying attention to what is not being done with taxes, things like that. And all the people who are out here hurting, it's, it's very important that people are mindful of these things. Understand what's what's coming. Understand that everything that's coming, they showed you in the Batman movies. I ain't talking about that new Batman. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like the Batman begins all the way through the Dark Knight Rises, right? A lot of the places are about to turn into Gotham. When people start, they, you already got women that can't afford baby formula, okay? People ain't gonna play too much about not being able to feed their kids. As these food prices continue to go up and gas prices continue to go up, you know, people are going to start to be testy. Right. They used to say back in the day, it's going to be a hot summer. Right. But but more so than anything, you know, it's going to be a cold winter. Understand winter is coming. And I ain't talking about the season. So let that, you know, let that sink in for people, man. And, you know, like I say, man, be, you know, what I'm saying repent, be baptized, you know, in the name of Jesus, you know, Acts 238. You know what I'm saying? And the be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all those things, people. So that's all I got, brother. Ka, ka. Shabbat all shalom. Right. Shabbat shalom. With that, everybody, enjoy the rest of your Shabbat. Shabbat shalom, everybody. <laughs>